Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to weld an open root with 1 8 60 10 on this plate, on this half inch plate. Right now I'm cutting my angle on it, a bevel, you know, and then I'll take a grinder and clean this all up. While we're cutting this bevel, in case you're new to the channel, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Austin Ross. I've been a welder for about 17 or 18 years. And I wanted to let you know about our online trade school, aerosswelding.school. But I also wanted to let you know about our other website, aerosswelding.com. Under the education tab, you should be able to find a resources list. There's several tools lists over there that you can, uh, in exchange for your email, you punch in your name and email, and we've got an essential tools list, a specialty tools list, a workwear list, and several other helpful lists over there on our website, aerosswelding.com. So I just wanted to let you know about that in case they would be helpful to your mobile welding journey or welding journey in general. So head on over there and check those out. All right, so I've got about a nickel landing on the end. I uh, sanded the mill scale off the back and the mill scale off the front. But anyway, nickel landing on both. I'm gonna go about a nickel space as well. And I've got my machine on 35, I believe. I got a 1 8 60 10. It's in the uh, 150 range on that SAE 300 of mine. Okay, so it's been a minute since I've uh, done anything on plate, and for some reason I'm a little intimidated, but um, anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, so these 1 8 60 10s here lately have been notorious for toenailing, which just means, you know, it trying to favor one side of that, that bevel or the other. So I was kind of fighting that, but in my puddle, whenever I first started, started up, my puddle wanted to try to go in front of me, so I tilted my rod back this way just to try to get it to do right before I dropped into my keyhole. And then I stood my rod back up and tried to just keep, I had to, I had to put a little more pressure on it than, than I preferred because my, my gap got a little bit snug right in here in the middle. But, so I put a little more pressure on it than I prefer, but that's kind of, it's kind of good for flat like that because what's coming to mind is flat. The main thing you gotta worry about is your bead being too excessive, in other words, falling through too much. So it's kind of good for it to be snug because you don't, gravity's already helping you in that, in that realm, if you will. Right there is where I dropped into my, my keyhole. Like I said, it wasn't, puddle wasn't doing right, so a little issue there. Tie-in ain't bad, but kind of impressed for since it's been a while since I've done any plate welds but anyway there it is 1 8 60 10 bead root pass open root pass on a on a uh, what do you call that 5g flat plate half inch plate with uh we don't know what what angle because we just done it by hand hello hello 
tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and run me a hot pass over that. I'm not gonna grind it, I'm just gonna go turn my machine up, probably 10, and run the same rod in there. I'm trying to think of uh, the amps that this would be compared to. I think a 1 8 usually calls for around between like 80 and 100 amps. So depending on what machine you're welding with. Boy, that's reminding me of 70 plus. Yeah, the way that was toenailing reminded me of 70 plus. 70 plus is uh, 8010 uh, rod we weld with on pipeline work, a downhill rod weld with a lot. It's just regular 8010, it's not the pipeliner, it's not the 8010 pipeliner. And uh, for a while there, I don't know how it is now, because it's been a while since I've been on a pipeline, but used to them 70 plus were, they toenailed real bad. So you had to, I don't know if you could see it on film, but whenever it started to favor one side real bad, I just, I kind of, I shoved it back into my puddle to burn that flux off evenly, if that makes sense. If that makes sense, let's try her again. Or let's finish, let's finish welding this. See, it did it real bad just then, so started pushing it into the sides to help control that toenailing. I kind of just more or less shove it into the puddle. And when I get to the end, I'm going to do the old back step. As far as my angle goes, I'm just, I'm mostly trying to keep it square with the with the plate you know I don't have an angle too far this way and I don't have an angled too far this way I'm mostly trying to keep it square I might lean it this way a little bit it kind of just depends on what it needs with this cellulose rod with any with any welding puddle what I've learned over the years of burning stick rod on on pipe between these bevels so between bevels years of what stick welding between bevels is you literally got to be willing to try anything you know, if, if pushing it ain't working, try pulling it a little. If long arcing it ain't working right, shove it down in your puddle further. You know, you just gotta be willing to try. Try anything, don't be, don't be scared. Don't be scared, boys, boys and girls. It's one of the best ways to learn, just to try it. It's true, experience is key. And what better way to get experience than to just bail right off and just try it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Head on over to arosswelding.school to check out our online courses. You can learn how to build pipe fence for yourself. If you're a landowner and you wanna build a nice, awesome looking pipe fence for your property, or if you want to learn how to do it so you can offer it in your mobile welding business that you may be starting. The pipe fence course, the quick rig course over there on our trade school website. And like I said, for more helpful information, check out the resources page over there at our other website, arosswelding.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and remember, learn something every day.